Welcome to the Costa Rica Travel and Living Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Baker. This is the series that discusses everything uh, related to Costa Rica travel and living, much as the title describes. Uh, this episode, I'm speaking once again to Costa Rican Vacation Senior Travel Consultant, Jess Licky. Jess has been in the country of Costa Rica now for a number of years, designs high-end vacations all over the country, and has recently bought some land about three hours away from San Jose, very close to the Arenal Volcano and the, uh, the city of Ciudad Quesada, San Carlos, in the rural northern area of Costa Rica. When I spoke to Jess four months ago, she was in the very beginning process of building her house, her dream house, here in Costa Rica. And I promised then that we would have another conversation to discuss how it's been going along. Uh, the pros, the cons are about building your own home here in Costa Rica and some of the tips, tricks and things you should know before you get stuck in. So if you're thinking about building your dream home in Costa Rica, make sure to give this episode a listen as you might learn a thing or two, as did I. Some very important stuff to consider before uh, building and before thinking about the process. Uh, and Jess really goes into some good detail about her and her now fiancé about uh, the process that those guys took and if they had any regrets and will they build again in the future make sure to, uh, to have a listen to get uh, to get to know what Jess feels um, about this process if you are enjoying this channel um, please don't forget to give us a like so we can keep giving you these podcast episodes and of course don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on everything Costa Rica related so without further ado let's chat once again with Jess Jess, how's it going? Great to have you back on another episode. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Can't complain. I'm excited to talk to you because last time I think we spoke was back in uh, early August. So approaching four, four and a half months now. And I think it's a great opportunity to chat about how far you've managed to progress when it comes to building your dream home here in Costa Rica. It's crazy how time has flown, right? Um, but yeah, it's... Man, it's been a journey for sure. So thanks for having me back. No, no problem at all. I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation, especially for those people in the dreaming phase or perhaps those people that have built their home as well. Want to know your experience, you know, acknowledge the similarities, the challenges, uh, stuff that I can't imagine you had any idea about before the process began and things you would probably change in the future. Um, so I guess the best place to start is... Uh, where were you four months ago and how much have you achieved in that period? Yeah, so I think when you and I had last chatted, we were talking about best things to do as far as a uh, travel itinerary here in Costa Rica. But I think as most of our listeners know, we all live and work here in Costa Rica. So I think the last time you and I chatted, I had just broken ground on um, on our new property. So I think we were just doing like that like digging the holes and things like that, like very, very early phases. Cause I think it was like early July. So we had just gotten started. Uh, so it's been four, four to four to five months. You just got started. Did you, did you have a particular timeline about how much you wanted to achieve? Was it six months? Was it a year? What was your complete goal? And maybe you can feel uh, for those that didn't listen to the first episode, you obviously, you've been in Costa Rica, you've worked in tourism for a number of years. You you live very close uh, within around an hour from the Arenal volcano. So beautiful countryside region. How long uh, had you planned from the start to the end date for the build? Yeah, so we, man, okay, so we had started building, when we had made the decision to start building, we knew that it was going to be, we needed to move in by November 15th. Why November 15th? Because me and tourism, our busy season starts at the end of November. And my now fiance, because I got engaged during these four months too. Okay, sure. um, Thanks. Um, he is a photographer and he has this uh, studio here in Ciudad de Quesada, which is where we live. Yeah. And he does his Christmas photo shoots. So he has his, you know, busy season is from about like mid-November till Christmas. So we both knew that we were going to be super, super full with our work schedules, you know, after November 15th. So we're like, okay, if we're going to do this, 
we need to leave ourselves enough time to be done and moved in by like, you know, November 15th before things get crazy. And you had just broken ground around middle of July when we last spoke. So obviously there's probably a lot of people here going, wow, how big is your house? And is that a realistic target inside four months? That seems like a very short time, especially in Costa Rica, to get something up and yeah. down and in. So we had started designing the house. So yeah, great question. So we have a lot that's about two acres. We always knew that we were going to do something smaller first because I don't, you know, I'm not from here. So whenever our family and friends would come to visit, we before were in a two bedroom apartment. One of the rooms was in, was an office. So we never really had any space to share with our, you know, our friends and family that would come. So we're like, okay, we want to have space. It's super important for both of us that when, that when friends and family come, they have a place to stay that's comfortable. And so we had found this, this property and we decided to start with a small house. So it's an extravagance, or I would say like a, a little bit of a, you know, a studio kind of, so it's just one bedroom. Um, our kitchen living room area is all kind of the same. And then we have, you know, two bathrooms, but I'd say it's like an elevated studio, um, house. So I don't know what it is in meters, but in square, I don't know what it is in square feet, but in square meters with the patio, um, it's about 177 square meters is nice. like the construction of this. So, so it's, it's quite comfortable to build as an initial process. So maybe four months is realistic. Out of interest, for those people thinking about this, maybe down the line or they're in the process of looking, how did you come about finding the lot? And how was the process of you doing that, especially being here in Costa Rica? Yeah. So when we met with our builder, he said 18 weeks is what he would expect. Okay. We, well, I think we may talk about that in the future. And, and did we, did that happen? Yeah. Um, or later in the, in the chat, but how do we find the lot? So we had kind of started talking about renting a new place, something a little bit bigger that maybe had an extra room. And once we started looking in our area for those kinds of rentals, they were, we, we had a really cheap rent before it included internet, two parking spaces, water, uh, two bedrooms, two floors. We paid like 450 us dollars per month, which I thought was super reasonable. So when we, when we started looking at three or four bedroom places, we saw that it was like thousand dollars a month, because at that point, most of them are homes. And I was like, that seems really silly to me to be paying that much money in this area for that space that's not ours. So we kind of started throwing around the ideas of buying a piece of property because we knew that we wanted to build something in the future. So we kind of started to like put our feelers out. Um, we were living in Ciudad Quesada, like in the town, but we really wanted to be up here in the mountains. And so we started to kind of put our feelers out in San Vicente, which is another um, town just right outside of Ciudad Quesada. And um, it's a little bit cooler. So we both really, really liked it. And we found this one property that we loved. It was, I think about the same two acres. And then we found out when we started doing like the soil studies that there was a naciente or like a, uh, some sort of natural waterway nearby. So we could actually only build on like 10% of the lot. Okay. And I was like, well, it seems kind of silly to buy this huge property. How do you build 10%? It's not cheap. To only be able to build on 10% of it. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I was super disappointed and I was like, I don't want to build anymore. I'm gonna stay in our little apartment. It's fun. Because you get excited and then of course so you deal with like you this find your dream place. Yeah. And you deal with this like roller coaster of emotions, and then you go there and you can imagine yourself here. And then as the studies come along, you're like, oh wait, actually, this is not realistic and it's not cheap, right? So um there was that roller coaster and and then Harold, my fiance, was like, well, if you love the idea of something a little bit bigger, I have some contacts that I think maybe have some of their properties, because a lot of the properties around here are inheritances. So yeah. no one's really itching to sell them, but they're kind of a, a lot of lots are for sale. Um, and so he'd reached out to someone that he knew that lives in this in this neighborhood, and they happened to have one for sale. And it was almost the exact same price as the previous lot we were looking at, I think it even had like, it was like 300, no, 500 square meters more. And it was like the same price. So I was like, this sounds way too good to be true. I'm not getting my hopes up. 
we came here. It was even, yeah, it was cheaper. I was like, this is just way too good to be true. And so we started doing like all of our due diligence and trying to, you know, reach out to the municipality to see if we could get the permits and, you know, doing all of our due diligence and making sure that the soil is okay to build on and all of the things. Make each other's no natural waterways <laughs> anywhere yes. around here, even that though we can cool. hear that some of the waterfalls from the Juan Castro Blanco National Park, which is right next to us. Uh -huh. um, and so, I mean, yeah, essentially it was my, all of this to say, you know, that the long answer to your question is my fiance had a contact um, just one of his like elementary school friends that his family had this property and kind yeah. of introduced us and it ended up working out. So we ended up buying the property last October. So it was like October 10th or something that we closed on it, but we did do due diligence from July of last year to October, like yeah. all of the studies and permits and all of the things took, took a few months. And so, that's an essential process. The, you must never be overlooked in Costa Rica, especially for the you know the the process on the back end, whether it's waterways and also for yourself, access to electricity, access to fresh water, whatnot. Um, okay, so that so you started that for a number of months last year, and then you began the building uh, building phase as you mentioned in July. Can you give somebody um, a range of pricing? What would be a low end for two acres of land in and around the Arenal area, and a high end? Just give us a low and a high, something that's good value and something that's pretty much on the top end for two acres. So people have an idea. Yeah, you know, I I actually don't. So I think La Fortuna is going to be a lot higher, right? Because it's a huge tourism Much area. closer to the actual hot spot of the, yeah, the area. We're pretty rural here. So I'd say like, I have a lot of friends that speak English, but they are, you know, because of their education and, and their their jobs. But there's not a ton of expats in my neighborhood. Uh -huh. And so therefore I wouldn't really call this like, a, at least where I purchased, I I don't see that inflation in rates because of the expats that are coming and kind of developing the areas. That's not really the case here. In fact, later I'll, I'll flip my camera around. Yeah. So you can see, I mean, it's it's pretty rural here. It's mostly, you know, just, it's, it's quite mountainous. So I, I don't want to say like, hey, these are the prices for La Fortuna because I don't yeah, know. Okay. I'm Within the region, a lot the more. Area. Yeah. But I'd say like um, for two acres, we we saw some properties that were $140,000, $150,000 US dollars. Um, and I'd say like even that other property that we were looking at that you could only build on 10% of it, I want to say that was like one thirty five, one forty. Yeah. And that's in rural areas. Um, super beautiful views. Yeah. Yeah, rural areas, but have access to, you know, water, electric. Yeah. You could see the volcanoes. Actually, you can see several volcanoes from there. Yeah. So amazing nice. views. Yeah. But definitely not like a tourist area. No, and of course, and that will hike up hugely, especially the closer you get to the beaches, the coastal area, some of the more populated areas. It's a really, it's a really interesting, but also a very... A very expensive part of the world to live in currently with the boom that we're having now, obviously post pandemic, the travel, it's a very popular place to visit and very beautiful, of course, to live here. But that gives some kind of indication or idea, especially for two acres of land in the more rural areas of the region. Can you explain some of the different ways you can build in Costa Rica in terms of a turnkey administration you mentioned or doing it directly with the builder, maybe some of the pros and cons of, of the different options? Yeah, so this is something that I I had to, and it's so funny because I go back and I always said to myself when I was managing the hotels, I'm never building anything in Costa Rica. It's a right. nightmare. No, I'm never no, doing it. Exactly. And then of course, now I'm like, never say never, right? So I didn't realize, but yeah, there are, there are three like main ways that you can build here in Costa Rica. So you can hire a company. There are several of them, at least in my area, I'm sure all over Costa Rica, but that do turnkey, um, Processes. So, hey, here's our plans. Here's our budget. What, you know, come back with whatever it's going to be. Okay. We, we actually quoted this. So someone told us for this guest house, it was going to be like $117,000 for everything minus appliances, minus furniture, things like right. that. And I'm like, mm, I was, I have my business and accounting background. I was like, I think I can do it for less. Yeah. Um. So there's, there's that option. There's administration. So a lot of architects will do this, um, but there's other companies that will do this as well. Um, our architect offered it to us as well. Um, the turnkey tends to increase your price like 20%. So they normally take whatever your budget is 
$117,000 in my case is what they came back with. And then they say our fee for doing this is 20%. The pros there are that you pay $117,000 for your house. And if prices increase, if import taxes change, I don't know, if anything happens during your, your building process, you pay nothing extra. They take on that risk, right? Yep. Um, the other option is the administration. So you essentially, you pay all the bills, um, you do all the the transactions, you know, you are telling the, with your builder, you're telling the the company that's administering the project what you need to quote, but they come back and they do all, all of like the dirty work for you. So they go find the providers, they do all the quotes, yeah. then they normally send you like three or four quotes back. So you can choose the best one based on, you know, quality. Issues. Yeah. Um, that's normally like, I think 10, per, anywhere from like seven to 10%. So it's about half the price of a turnkey property. And then the other option is doing everything yourself with, with the builder. Yeah. So, um, you know, he would say, Hey Jess, this week, we're going to need X amount of, you know, nails and rebar and cement and blocks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. And then I go find the providers and I go quote and I choose and send it all over. A all lot of work to, to, doing it that way. A lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of materials are obviously you've probably got a degree of expectation or, you know, understanding of others, friends, family back from the US. When you were doing it, I mean, is there a process of difficulty in, in terms of some of the materials? Or I guess I should I should probably start by asking, which one did you choose from the off? How much did you want to be hands on with the process? So I wanted to see what each process would look like. Um, this is actually, a, that's a really good question. So we quoted the turnkey and I, at that point, I was like, I was thinking about keeping this under a hundred and you're quoting me 117 plus your fee, yeah. um, which I'm super thankful I didn't do turnkey because I was here, you know, living seven minutes away and I came here and I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to make this bathroom bigger. It's a lot smaller than yes, what I thought had, when I saw the renders. Involvement. Exactly. So I, I made a bunch of changes, right? Um, so I chose not to do, and I'm glad that I didn't, but I chose not to do the, the turnkey. We started by doing administration. Um, so we were actually, our architect has his team that administers projects. So we had started um, building, I'd say the first two weeks that we broke ground, we had, uh, and the architect that we used was one of my fiance's childhood friends um, that is now working in that industry. And so we started to, you know, we have to get uh, sand and you have to get, um, you know, all the materials, like for the yeah. very, very base of, of the home to mix the cement, things like yeah. that. So he would start to to quote things and I was like, man, that seems really expensive. And so I'd say we, we probably did this for like two weeks. And at one point, like I realized like my fiance and I were kind of like really stressed. I'm like, this is going to be a really long process because we started to like quote on our own as well. And the quotes that we were finding were lower than what our architect was finding. We found that he wasn't really guiding us in the best way. Perhaps it was just, you know, a, a lack of experience. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> you know, like that, yeah. I don't think I can pay him to administer this project. I'm not going to feel confident about it the whole time. We're just getting started. We're finding a few errors. He was taking a day or two to get some quotes where I would text some of the, the guys at the ferreterias or like the, the yeah. shops here in town yeah, and, yeah. and they'd get back super quick. They'd get back to me within 10 minutes. So I was just really uneasy about it. And so we decided to, you know, just pay him whatever he charged us for those first few weeks. Um, and then we decided to, to do everything on our own with our builder. Um, we, you have to have some sort of interaction or inclusion of your architect in the project, right? So they do like the weekly reports and they, I don't even know where they all send that to, but they have to send it to like the board of architects and make sure, you know, with the permits that everything is, is done well or according to, to code. So we kind of, we, we investigated, you know, the, the three options, but honestly, if you're not here in Costa Rica, I cannot imagine doing what we did, just building directly with the, with, you know, with the builder. And I am so grateful for the builder that we got. He was, is so absolutely amazing. So 
if you're going to do it, or even with administration, like knowing your builder, interviewing your builder and having that confidence. Otherwise the whole process is a nightmare. Yeah, it is. It's, it's so true. And I can imagine, cause I've heard similar stories, whether it's uh, working, not just for yourself or you're doing, um, you know, real estate work, you're building project managing, you need to have that trust with the person that's managing your project, not just your builder or your investment or your architect. And even that's even an old family friend who is then obviously not providing necessarily um, the support or the help that you would hope for. And of course, people always hear, oh, well, you guys, you know, you've been here in the country. Maybe um, your partner is a local and they have a family member or somebody that knows. So that just goes to show that how difficult it can be even for you that have been here yeah. for many, many years, are based here and still have that person that you would like to invest the trust in, but found that it became difficult. And at least you were able to administer the, administer the process uh, early enough in the process to not make it uh, too uh, detrimental in terms of the the pocket. Um, yeah, well, it's so funny because sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. I think as you or at least when I started to build, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm going to do my due diligence. We did it with the property. I'm going to do it with the builder. Um, our builder, we got recommend recommendations from like his last seven homes. Not one person could give us a complaint. Yeah. Nice. Um, we we went with the architect because we thought we knew him and and we do know him yeah but he doesn't have nearly the experience that the builder did yeah and we made a mistake with the architect like we will not be using him for any of our future projects yeah. not because he's unable but he just doesn't have that experience that yeah. some of our other providers do have um, and had that made the process just uh, you know so much easier yeah no no of course what other experiences have you had within real estate in Costa Rica? People that you've worked with before, other projects, and how did this impact what you do going into this project? So at the hotels that I helped manage when I first came here to Costa Rica were constantly under construction. I mean, the owner of the hotel had his own construction uh, company within the company. I mean, he had his own uh, carpenters and woodworkers and uh, I mean, everything, everything, everything. He had his own machinery. And so I kind of got to see the the pains, but also the the possibilities of building in Costa Rica. Um, and that's why I said I was never going to build ever. And I'm like, you know what? We're just going to buy things that are already, you know, already built and we can renovate. Renovating here is hard because everything or most places are built with, you know, with block and and or a lot harder to take down walls and things like that. Um, so I actually, my first, first piece of real estate here was with my, or is with my mom. So during the pandemic, my mom decided that she was going to come um, down here and spend some more time with me. So she retired and she's like, I want to come down and spend some time in Costa Rica every year for, you know, three to six months, kind of a snowboarding idea. Yeah, nice, yeah. um, and she's like, I want to, you know, I want to be on the beach. So we called Richard Bexon, who is amazing. And he took us around for one day and showed us a bunch of different properties. We went to different beach locations based on what my mom was looking for and um, ended up buying a condo in Playa del Coco. So near the Liberia airport, two bedroom condo, super cute in the Pacifico community. Um, and so my mom comes, now she comes like January through may or june and then i rent out that property nice. um the other months that she's not here yeah fantastic. Um, and so we have that property um and then we also during the pandemic uh, my fiance's aunt had a house or has a house near la fortuna that simply no one was using and it needed some some tlc so we decided to invest some money into the property to kind of give it a facelift and we now Harold and I, and um, along with Harold's aunt, we kind of manage and, and rent out that property as well. So we have one on the beach and one in Fortuna. Um, and so that's kind of the the real estate experience that I have with, you know, rentals and, and buying. I would not buy anything in an area that I'm not in without Richard. He was yeah. super, super crucial in that experience too. Oh, right. And I think you just had a, a chat with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple of podcasts ago. Good shout out to, to Richard there with the real estate uh, Costa Rica podcast and business that's going very well. Uh, highly recommended. Like you say, checking out with Richard, it kind of gives you one of those um, honest opinions where, you know, he's a, a lot of real estate businesses, right? They've obviously got skin in the game to sell you on the property or the area that they themselves sell. 
working with someone like Richard, you can see the whole um, country just with the multitude of projects that he manages, but also getting a completely unbiased opinion of what's going to work for you and taking the time to actually have a look about, you know, in the different areas, because there is plenty of options. So I'm really glad you guys were able to do that and that it's worked out, obviously, for your mum. Plus, it sounds like you guys could also manage your own Costa Rican vacation. Uh, having our volcano, then you're off to the beach. Um, you can, you can hey, have some competition. We've got a lot of family. <laughs> uh, we've got a ton of family and friends that come down and they're like, what should I do? I'm like, I've got it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just no, go check out both places. That, that's awesome. Uh, so you, you mentioned something earlier on in the podcast and it made me think about, so I've done, I've done a fair amount of interior design in, in my 18 odd years here, some of our hotels as well that we used to manage. And I remember going into the projects because a couple of those interior, uh, design projects began with the remodeling of, of, of some suites at different hotels, master suites and whatnot. So there was a certain amount of construction. I worked on a spa as well. And I remember trying to set timelines and deadlines with construction groups, especially working with people outside the metropolitan area in the more rural areas of Costa Rica. It can be quite challenging trying to stay on time and also having the price expectation. And I remember one option was trying to sign a contract where if you finish early, you will get a 5% raise on the initial cost. But the, if you agree to that, if you finish on time, we are agreed on the price. For every day you go over, there's going to be a deduction in the contract. So that's one way of managing. And not, not everybody's going to agree to that. But it, perhaps if they agree to that type of contract, gives you a, a realistic idea that they might work accurately to the deadline. Obviously, that's not always the case in Costa Rica. How was your experience? Was that 18 week uh, timeline that you were given accurate? And how far are you now as we're you know having this conversation in early December? Yeah, and I think to your point too, like there's so many ways you can work with builders and contractors here. Um, you can pay them hourly, right? They manage their own team. You just pay the hours and the payroll. We decided to do a contract uh, with Manrique, who's our builder. So he said, okay, per square feet, I'm going to charge you this based on your plans. Um, so we took that amount. We divided it by 18 weeks. And we said, okay, we'll pay you, you know, X amount to get yep. started. And then we'll, you know, save the last whatever bit for the end and we'll divide up the rest between 18 weeks um <laughs> he is so amazing and he was he even had one one of those 18 weeks was a was a cushion and he was so good like i would come here three weeks before i moved in he's like oh like we're we're so good everything's on time as you can see my roof here or the ceiling is is cedar so yeah. we are up here in the mountains. It's a little bit chilly sometimes. Um, and so I thought, you know, to kind of combine the Costa Rica tropics, but also with my Wisconsin native uh, culture a little bit, the yeah. wood details really brings in everything that I love about a home. And it just feels super cozy up here in the mountains. And so he had um, he had installed all of the the, the ceiling and again we're like by the time he had he had installed everything we were probably a week out all he had to do was finish the the ceramic and um do the like the varnish of the wood and i had gone and picked that out everything's great he starts to apply it i you know left because i wasn't we weren't living here at the time yeah. and we come back the next day and the whole ceiling is like splotched like splotted and I almost started crying. I was like, this looks so awful. And poor Monrique is already out on the patio, like doing more samples and like figuring out what happened. And um, it was so awful. Anyways, this one detail, because now they had to go and sand it by hand. Uh -huh. And when I talk about like great builders, Mon most builders would say like, nope, this is what you asked me for. Here are the materials that you bought, you brought for me. This is your final product. Yeah. Manrique is like, my biggest goal is that you are always happy and content with the home. And so, you know, we, we had a discussion there on what was the cost going to be to him to sand everything by hand with four guys in three days and, and all the things. So that really... That ate that one mistake ate up his whole cushion. Week. Yeah. Um, because you had to resand everything, 
you had to, you know, do the, there's like a sealer that you then put on the wood before you then varnish it. Right. And yeah, that, that pretty much ate up his whole week. So I come here like November 15th was the date, right? I come here like the 13th. I'm like, I'm moving in in like two days, right? Like I have the, the van and the moving truck is, you know, paid. We are moving in here in two weeks or two days. And like all of the, um, like all the furniture or the cabinetry was installed already. I was like, I'm, I'm moving in here. And so long story short, I did move in on November 15th, which was the deadline. The patio was not finished. We have some, um, like we have like a pergola or like a, a roof on the patio for sun and, and rain uh -huh. that wasn't finished, but everything inside the house, especially what was necessary to live here. We had water, electric, um, hot water, um, furniture, like everything else was installed, but I'd say that he probably took another three weeks to finish, uh, the outside things. And again, amazing builder. Like there's some things that we've found since we moved in that were like, Hey, Monrique, this is like yeah. not up to our standards. And he's, he's come in and, and changed. So, or has fixed or, you know, finished whatever it might yeah. be. So we're still not a hundred percent done. As you can see over here, our, our AC unit is still covered in plastic yeah, because every now and then a, there's dust. You want to loop the camera around for those watching on YouTube to get an idea. There you go. Yeah. So here's our kitchen, which is we have our, actually our housewarming party tonight. So oh, we've got timing. some stuff over there, but then the, the view here, you can nice. see it. And that's some of the land outside. Awesome. Yeah. So this is even the trees from here. It's kind of like a hill down. Yeah. So up top here is about 3000 square meters. Our second house, so our main house will then be down here. Um, I don't know, maybe in three years. After we do some more saving. I was going to ask you, of course, so it sounds like obviously you, you know, you were very fortunate with Manrique, uh, your builder. He was very open to everything that you wanted and he wanted you to have a great experience as well, which is wonderful. And that won't always be the case, right? So that's fantastic. Um, and obviously the cushion of the extra week helped you out with one of the areas that happened to be, you know, occur with the wood. So these are really good things for tips to take in for other people thinking about the process, the importance of interviewing someone that valuable um, when it comes to choosing a builder. Is there any regrets that you have about the way and anything you would do differently? And obviously you mentioned the future, maybe in a few years, your next house, what would you do differently? I personally, like just for my situation, I speak fluent Spanish. Yeah. My fiance is Tico from here in Costa Rica. I feel confident building again with Manrique. I don't know that I would do this again if it was with another builder or if he uh -huh. retires or whatever happens. Yeah. Um, but as far as regrets, I don't know, maybe giving myself a little bit more time, even like there were some final details where I felt a little bit pressured to make a decision and, and that maybe I'm not super happy with them. Um, you know, like the final sealer on our walls because we did like a finished cement look on the walls and we uh -huh. used a brand that I don't necessarily love okay um so like we had someone come through here and um you know just spray for like yeah critters and things yeah. like that and like you with all of that smoke in here you could actually see the this anyways there's like small details that I maybe change if I had a little bit more time but also now that I have the building experience that I do yeah yeah I feel a little bit, you know, more relaxed about building a, another. And those are details, something that you now have experience from that you can easily change next time going into it, but nothing on the larger process, you know, in terms of planning, which is great, uh, making sure you did all your due diligence at the initial phase um, and finding out and also realizing perhaps the initial error with the person that was onboarded architecturally at the start and being able to offload. It seems like you avoided many of the issues and the pitfalls that some people fall into which is always a very good, a very good experience. It does sound like Manrique is the guy that everybody needs when working on a house in the San Carlos area. If there was a link to Manrique, I think he might be getting some referral business. <laughs> He's amazing. Like amazing. Fantastic. So I, we, and we feel super blessed. Like 
of course, like are the little things that kind of happen throughout the the construction that were stressful. Um, yeah, but looking at the house now, we're like, we are so blessed and so fortunate. Uh, we didn't have to rely on, you know, the banks or anything to build our house as well. Yeah. So that made things a lot yeah. easier. We didn't have to deal with the financing, uh, you know, any of that can, can kind of be a headache too sometimes. Of course. Yeah, super, super grateful in our little mountain home here. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a roller coaster and, and a lot to learn. I I was an accountant, yeah. like nothing about no. building, yeah. let alone in the States here in Costa Rica and a different vocabulary. Like it's- it, It's incredible what you can, what you can kind of, if you keep saying yes and open your, your heart to many experiences in Costa Rica, in your case, accounting in the States coming down, uh, starting at a small hotel, staying there for a long time, working at two of the largest hotels and popular hotels in the country before moving over now sideways to Costa Rican vacations, building your dream home near a very popular region, uh, obviously engaged now, soon to be married. It's a lot. It's an amazing plan. It's an amazing uh, story to date. Again, I think in a few months, it would be great to get you you know, back on to see how you've managed to kind of tie up all the loose ends of the house especially going into the high season, maybe after the, the travel uh, season picks up. Maybe your mum will be in the country as well. I'd love to get her opinion on what she thinks of the place. And then, of course, your future plans uh, about expanding the lot and how you would manage that. I think a lot of people would probably find that quite interesting as ever. Yeah, you know, it's it's quite amazing. I am not going to cry, but I'm quite emotional. I wake up every day, and especially now where I am, I'm like, how flipping cool is this? Yeah. Like I live in the most amazing place. I have amazing views. We have scarlet macaws. We hear the white faced monkeys and they're down in the trees every day. I get to build packages for people to come to Costa Rica every single day. It's truly amazing, Adam. Like what you and I do for a living and like sharing this country, I don't sell life insurance. <laughs> yeah, You know, like I, I, I we build we build experiences in one of the most beautiful and peaceful places in the world. And I just feel so, so thankful and lucky to, to be here and to be able to do this and to yeah. have these experiences. So I thank you for having me. I really no, appreciate I, it. And it's always a pleasure. And it's always really gratifying for me to chat to you because it's, your enthusiasm um, always comes across for the country, but also what you do. And it's really nice to be grateful. I'm approaching 18 years next month in January, since I first came over in 06 uh, and I, I, I feel grateful constantly, you know, now I'm raising my family here in this country as well. Chloe, one year old, uh, one year old. I can't believe how fast time flies, but I am very excited to get her out and about traveling around the country. Obviously, your area, the, the adventure at the volcano, and then obviously the coastline. There's a lot to do here. And I think it is great to constantly be grateful, obviously, for what we do. And obviously, if you enjoy loving, you know, planning vacations, it's a, it's a wonderful job and you do create some amazing dreams. So, yeah, I think it's always good to be grateful and remind ourselves of where we're living, right? Um, Jess, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on. I will put your link to planning vacations. And obviously, just to reach out to you, if anybody is interested in uh, in planning um, their own build, real estate can be a tricky ground to master in Costa Rica. Shout out to Richard as well. As you mentioned, Richard's a great resource if you want to explore the country. And uh, as mentioned, hopefully have you back, uh, Jess, in a few months' time to see how you've progressed. Awesome. Yeah. And if anyone wants to reach out, super honest feedback about building, buying, uh, you know, developing properties, it's it's not easy. It's a roller coaster and having p good people in your in your corner, in your pocket is is crucial. So super happy to to chat about that with anyone. And and yeah, next time we chat, I'm sure my mom will be down here and she'd love to chat. She's She loves Costa Rica too and she'll be spending, this will eventually be her house um, when she's got little grandkids running around down Wonderful. below. And yeah. um, so we'll, we'll be in touch when she comes. Fantastic. Next well, year. Good luck with the housewarming and uh, hopefully catch you in the new year. Thanks. Fantastic. We'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays. Take care. Bye -bye. I hope you enjoyed that insightful conversation as much as I did. Jess really gave us a good idea of some of the challenges that she faced uh, during her dream build 
um, up in the hills near the Arenal volcano in a more rural region of Costa Rica. There's always a lot to discuss and discover when it comes to building here in Costa Rica. And I found it fascinating to chat with Jess and learn about her experience. Amazingly, very close to having it done on time inside 18 weeks, just over four months from the very beginning of turning the soil over to actually moving in to her house uh, before Christmas. If you have any questions for Jess, make sure to reach out to her with the contact details that you can find below. I'm sure she'll be more than happy to help you plan your vacation to Costa Rica or even chat in more detail about the big move down, of course, building your dream home, if that's the case. As mentioned, Richard Beckson offers a great insight as well if you're interested in project managing, um, anything to do with real estate, you can find his information below as well. And of course, if you have any questions for us, please let us know in the comments box below and I will get straight back to you. Perhaps one of the themes you would like to, uh, for us to discuss in the next episode, we'd be more than happy to do so. Please give us a like if you've enjoyed this video, share it around. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to never miss another episode of the Costa Rica Travel and Living Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Baker. And until next time, hasta la próxima.